Hello everybody. In this screencast, we're going to look at the room library, which is a library that allows you to store is an abstraction layer on top of SQLite that makes it much, much easier to implement or integrate SQLite into your, uh, into your application. Thing is that there is a lot of repetition when you use SQLite. Basically, you have to create dead access objects. You have to create open helpers. You also have to create the uh, the uh, the the objects or entities that represents these objects it's just too much of a repetition and too much code as you have seen in the previous videos um so now let's create so basically this is the documentation on room and you just first have to add the dependencies there are a lot of optional dependencies for room basically i'm just going to add the dependencies that are required which is the first two there it is i'm going to copy this go to the sample app it's empty there is nothing inside the app I'll go to the app module and then under dependencies, I'm going to paste this, right? So basically this is a variable that defines the version number and then the version number is being used here. And basically I am going to sync now and it's going to import the library into the application. So here it is, that's, uh, that's how we import the library. Now what I'm going to build is something very similar to the application we just built, the note, the notes uh, uh, table. So basically we're create, going to create a notes table. So if you scroll down a little bit, there are different uh, requ uh, requirements. One of them is the database, right? The major components, the database, right? And then there is an entity which is defines the table, right? It's an entity class that we're going to, and then the data access object. All right, so now let's create an entity. And in our case, the entity is a note. So basically I'll right click here, create a Java class, and this is the entity note. So basically we have to identify that this is a note. So basically here, uh, you could see here how they define entities. Me zoom in a little bit and you could see that uh, you have to use annotations so this is something a little bit new in, in java that we are going to use it's called annotations so basically here i need to declare this as an annotation let me make this a little bit smaller so you could see both screens I'll double click here and just drag this window a little bit to the side okay so you could see both screens here it is so here it is i need to say add and this is an entity here it is cool there is an entity and then you can open a bracket and then some cases they have you could also tell it what's the table name i can specify table name and i'm going to call the table name a note right or i can call it notes if i want so here is the table name right and then basically there are other things that i'm not going to use now but anyhow so this is the the entity defines the note as the entity and then i need to add a primary key my primary key public long id and that's my primary key so basically i need to tell it that this is the primary key at primary key and then the primary key, what else is there? Is it auto-generate? Yes, I want it to be auto-generate to true because I want it to be auto-increment, right? So that's the, that is one of the keys, right? So basically here it is. Now I want to add other fields. I have a public string and that was called what subject, right? I need to tell it that this is going to be a column. So here it is. I could say column info. I don't need to specify any parameter. If I need to give it a name by default, it's going to be exactly the same as the field name here but that's the default name so, or i could change the name right so i'm not going to give it any name uh, i'm just going to say this is a column similarly here i need to create another column public string and it's the note that's the actual note so that becomes my note and maybe i can create a two string just so that i could a uh, let me create a two string where is studio let me create a two string here it is with everything okay cool now also i would like to create a constructor usually i could create a constructor which okay constructor which has all the fields maybe i can create a constructor that has only then the, the two these two fields and then empty constructor okay select none and here it is so basically i created my constructors and this is just to show you how you can define the table so basically here i'm telling it that this is the primary key this is the table name and uh, th these are the different columns. Okay, very nice. So that's the note. Now, I want to create a DAO. So if you look here, there's a DAO, which is the data access object. So let me create one new Java class, or it's an interface, and it's called the note DAO. Okay, here it is, note DAO. And then I need to tell it that it's a DAO. I just go here and say DAO. This is a DAO. Here it is. So it's telling it that this is a DAO. Okay, cool. So now I want to get, for example, um, I want to, for example, uh, create, uh, get, oh no, I'm not going to write the queries first. Let's say I want to insert a new user. So it's, uh, insert a new note. So you do insert. Here's the insert. Void, insert, all. And basically I'm going to pass note, dot, 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 notes. All right. So that becomes the 
the function that the, the the library is going to implement. This is how you insert. This is how you create a user, right? Or you create a note right? in our case. Now, if I want to get, you want to delete. Here's the delete, delete, and basically void again, delete, and you pass it a note, note, and it's going to delete that note. All right, that's how you delete, right? So here it is the delete. And you see, these are not implementations. These are just to guide the, the library, right? So the, the annotations are telling it what this function is going to do. And then the code is going to be filled in by the library. Now, to get all the users in the world, so you need to have a query. Query. And inside the query, I will do select all from notes. That's the name of the table, right? So basically, if you look here, if you looked again at the note, we called it notes, right? The table name is notes, right? So we go back in here. And that's going to be a list a list of note and that's gonna be get all for example get all all right here we are and option enter import class and here we are all right so that's getting all the users right inserting deleting getting all the users now if i want to get a, a specific user by id i could do the same thing query here it is and i would i can select only one user find one user so i do the same thing select all from notes where where uh, id equals and then if i want to use a parameter so i will do say for example id right so i'll do something like this i'll show you in a little bit so now uh, and i can limit it to one if i want limit to one because it's going to come back as one anyway and then here you are going to return a note and for example find by id right and here it is a long id and here we go so basically you see this id is whatever you are passing here and it's a colon id right you can have other parameters for id equal to this and for example the the uh, the subject uh, is like uh, for example i could say um, and then uh, for example i could say subject something like that and then this means that you can add another parameter here string subject Okay, so basically these are to refer to the parameters here, right? Okay, so I don't need the subject. I'm just going to get it by ID just to show you that you can have multiple parameters. So here it is. Okay, here it is by ID and it returns back one user. Okay, one note, I mean. You want to get all the notes. This is what we did here, right? And now what we can do is I can also uh, update. So basically I can go here, update. Okay, and then basically void update user or sorry note note how you can update a note so basically here we are we have all the do i didn't write any queries or or, or any implementations of these uh, using the the library i didn't use any this is all going to be filled in by the library you know they are going to generate the code for that all right so that's this create update insert and so on so that's this we created the dao and then this is how you create the database so we need to create another class to host the database so here it is and we'll call this the app database okay the app database and this is an abstract class here is abstract class okay cool so now now we tell it at the top that this is the database the database and then here if you look here i need to provide a version I need to provide what are the entities and the DB export. So let's say the version. I say version one, right? And that's actually enough. You can just, does it need something else? Let's see. Add missing parameters of entities. You have to tell it what are the entities. And that's an array where you specify the entities. The first entity is the node, right? Node.class. That's my entity, right? So basically you see here, this is the user class. And in, in my case, it's just the node entity. And then I could do public abstract and then this is the this is the the note dao sorry the note dao and it's the uh, note dao and it, uh, th this is going to be implemented by the system also by the uh, the library also basically this gets you an, an access to the node dao right okay cool so that's this all right so that's the database this is the version it's very similar to the opener so that's required for the opener to tell it what is the node class and so on right now, if you go back to the main activity, now let's try to run this. Let's try to test it and run it. So now, how do we get an instance of the database? Say app database db equals room dot, 
and then we do the database database builder right it needs the context i'll say this and then basically after that you have to tell it what's the class that you are using the app database.class and then the database name note.db right that's what i'm going to write here here it is note.db and then i will build it will build it right but before i build i need to specify some things one of them is allow run uh, allow running it on the main thread so allow main thread queries i'm going to do that and then also fall back to destructive migration so basically this fall back to the destruct destructive migration is basically going to um, uh, uh, whenever you change the version uh, bump up the version is going to destruct the database and then recreate it again right so that's usually what we do but if you want to do something else then you have to write some uh, migrations migration so basically you could see here so add you can add migrations to tell it what to do when the migration is about to happen now it's not happy for some reason but if we scroll here i did call the build function to get you the build this is my database now i probably need to run it and see why it's not happy okay so now we go back again the abstract class database app database so here it is it's a public abstract class oh it needs to extend the room database right so it needs to extend this room database now if you go back here it's happy so basically the app database it's an abstract class it extends the room database and you put here an, uh, a reference to the node do you know you can get it by through that function now if we go back to your main activity okay now i have access to the database right so now if i run this okay it did run so we we'll go back here it did run nothing happened right so now let's go i have access to the database so now i could do db dot no do dot now let's add or insert all okay i create new note okay and let's say for example this is the subject one and note one so i'm adding one here let me add more so add one and comma I can add another one let's say this is subject two okay this is subject two and note two okay let me just put it on the new line now how can i do this why i'm able to do this because if you look at the node definition node, node the do definition the um, the insert uh, has these dots this means that you can specify multiple parameters right it's an array can specify multiple parameters insert all right so that's what i'm using whole uh, here is insert hole let's so basically let's do it again at another one and i'm going to insert subject say three right and subject three here it is now what if i want to get them so i'll do log d and i'm going to do db dot get all right sorry dot do dot get all right so i can do that and then let me just define this tag tag equal demo just so that we could show the do so basically i'm going to create three see here i'm creating three insert all these three and i am getting them all here all right so let's run it you see here the note i have the two string right here's the two string right okay cool so now we go back here to look at all right you could see here that i let me clear this run it again let me bump up the version so that we only have three so now if you go here to the database and i bump up the version that's a it's going because i when i defined it i said uh, destructive migration this means it's going to delete the database and create a new one okay so now when i run it you will see i only have here it is i only have three see one one note second note and third note and you could see here that i am able to get these notes right so here they, here they are i'm able to get them right and i even the id i'm getting the id i'm getting the subject everything is coming in correctly right now let's say we get we comment out this right we run we run it again you're still gonna get three here it is why because they, there are three in the database now we can also use the other ones like for example let's say db dot that's a note right so note note equal db dot do dot find by id and let's say i'm gonna get number one the one with this id right and then let's do log d and here we are note right so i can run this okay and you can see that i'm getting the one with this id now can i update it let's see i'm going to update it 
let's say not let's say not dot uh, subject equal let's say updated updated subject one you know just to test this out right and then i want to update so what i will do is to update i will just say db dot do dot update note right let's run it and see so basically i'm going to run it for the first time to update right and let's say after you update let's print out all the nodes from the data from the table so i'm going to do it like this so basically coming in i'm getting the one with id one the note with id one and updating its subject calling the update function and then i'm getting them all just to see if the update actually happened so we run it okay and you go here and you can see that the update actually happened see here we updated the subject and i updated the note the note is not updated i can also update it here if i want i could just say note dot uh, note equals testing note update okay here we are colon you run it again and you could see here that it says testing note update now the delete let's try the delete so to delete i will just say db dot not do dot delete and you pass it the note and that's going to delete it so basically you have to find the note first and then you delete it all right you run it all right you see here that note one has been deleted cool so we have demonstrated the insert the update the delete and then getting all we did that also and you can find one by which is what we are doing to find the specific note find one by okay it's very simple i didn't write that much code i just have to define these um these annotations or uh, where appropriate right for example in the note we have to identify the entity and then the columns that i am interested in right and then in the DAO, you have to uh, have the methods that you are interested in. Like, for example, get all, find by ID, and so on. Things can get a little bit more complicated. If you need, you have to read the documentation, the detailed documentation of uh, the room uh, library. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.